Today, we're going to make a wire hot using Ohm's law. Actually, we're gonna use a battery to heat the wire, but we're gonna use Ohm's law to understand what's going on. There's so many things you can do with a hot wire. You got, you can heat things, you can make things smoke, you can you know, melt things, of course, you can make light, you can get hurt, you can cut things. It's nice to be able to use Ohm's law to keep that predictable and to understand how to easily make a very, very, very simple circuit to heat a wire to do something. Let's start with a really basic concept of electricity, just to make sure we're on the same page. Electrons are here and they want to go here. That may seem backwards, but the electrons are negatively charged and they are going this direction. My light turned off. Really? All right, back. Anyway, I didn't know they went that way until just a couple months ago. How about let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be? If you've ever worked in a car before, you know not to drop the wrench on the battery terminals, otherwise you see sparks, maybe some flying melted lead. Don't do that. But that's the same exact circuit we're making with just a really much smaller wrench. In this case, Canthal wire, 28 gauge. Canthal wire does a really good job at heating up and not getting all brittle and stuff. So that's what we're gonna use. And to be clear that I'm not being figurative about my wrench analogy, but we're, we're making the same circuit. Here's the Canthal wire. The battery is 12.5 volts right now. That's about three ohms for this 28 gauge Canthal wire at that length, very controlled. So if you're following along, the primary things you need are 28 gauge Canthal wire and a 12 volt power supply capable of supplying up to five amps. In my case, I'm just gonna use this Makita battery with a regulator. So when we look at Ohm's law, there are a bunch of different equations. And the one we really care about is the one that helps us determine resistance by using volts and amps. So we wanna find ohms and we have volts, which is 12 and amps, which is something five or less. Let's say three, we can decide. As long as it's less than five, we can pick it. See how that works. So we're gonna say 12 volts divided by three amps equals four ohms. Use a multimeter. About 0.8, farther, 1.6, Farther, Let's see if I can get 2.4. Ah, hey, uh, there's four ohm. So we just need to hook up the leads here and here, and that'll be our circuit. We should see it glow a little bit. There it is, there's the hot wire. Look at it glow. See if you can see the glow a little bit better now. Pretty cool. So that's 12 volts, four ohms resistance between those leads and three amps. It takes a couple seconds to heat up and that's not enough current to let it deform or anything to let it melt. Let's change things a bit. Three ohms so that we have four amps. It's up a lot faster, brighter. I'm twisting the wing nut on the side. Oh, there it is. It's staying just tight now. So that glow, 12 volts, three ohms, four amps. The only thing holding us back is our imagination. So what if you don't want to buy a power supply, you just want to use something you have on hand? Well, here's something a lot of people have on hand, just a basic USB battery pack. This one has two ports, and this gives us most of the stuff we need to know for Ohm's law. In this case, five volts, 4.5 amps max, that port 2.4 amps max, that port 2.1 amps max. So let's just say two amps for our circuit. So now we have five volts, two amps to plug into our equation. Do the math, 2.5 ohms is the resistance we're looking for for our wire length here. So now it's just a matter of hooking up this wire to our battery pack. The nice thing about these battery packs is they usually have a built-in protection circuit. See it smoking there? It's getting hot. Simple circuits are so good, like so predictable. This Ohm's Law thing, this guy was really onto something. That's cool. No more power than your iPad uses to charge. Two amps, five volts. It's actually cutting through the wood there. Isn't that sweet? So far, one thing's remained constant. That's the wire size. We've been using 28 gauge Canthal wire, but I also have this 36 gauge on hand. We might want to use the thinner 36 gauge wire if we're using a puny power supply that can't deliver the current to keep that thick wire hot. 
Example, this three pack of AA's can't supply two amps, but it can supply one amp. So let's see how long of a wire we need using the same 28 gauge canthal wire we've been using. So there it is, the one amp is running through here, but the wire is dissipating the heat too quickly. So it's not really building heat to do anything worthwhile. It's not even turning this note card brown. But using the same numbers with a 36 gauge wire instead, 4.5 volts, 4.5 ohms, one amp. Well, that's gonna take a lot shorter of a 36 gauge wire. So that one amp flowing through there is gonna keep that wire nice and hot before that heat can dissipate. And by the way, I do not recommend using double A's or triple A's or nine volt batteries for heating a wire. They're just not built for that sort of thing. They'll drain quickly and then you gotta buy new ones. On second thought, my thoughts on batteries are probably for a different video. I'm gonna get back to editing that dust collection one. Stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell, check it out. In the meantime, if you have any ideas on what to do with this thing or if you've done something cool with a heated wire, post a note in the comments. See you next time. I kinda like to feel it to feel if it's getting hot, but yeah, that's hot. Oof. Um, <clears throat> so it's not glowy hot, but just because it doesn't glow. Okay, it's got to do something. It's got to do something. Let's see if any of this glycerin in here. Yeah, so it's hot. This thin wire makes me really nervous. It's so, so thin and jumpy and hairy. <laughs> Whew, I can I can smell my skin burning. Okay. Brr.